broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Everyone, welcome into the program. I hope that you're doing well and you are ready for today's program. So today on the show, we have the one, the only, Mr. Nathan Evans. He's managing editor over at popzara.com. If you want to check them out, we'll have a link in the show notes. But of course, you can head straight on over there to find all of the uh, all the great work that they do, including their podcasts, including their articles on, you know, many has some media, comic books, uh, movies, games, you know, so much more. They do uh, tech reviews. They do a little bit of everything. And we really appreciate that Nathan is able to make it on with us every single month to, you know, just kind of recap and talk about things. Uh, normally, we try to put them on a Friday because I feel like a lot of people need like a whole weekend to kind of, you know, come down from Nathan. But you know what? We're going to try something different. We're, we're going to rile you up on a Monday. So everyone, welcome into the program. Uh, ComputerAmerica.com. That's where you'll find every Everything from past shows, future shows, show notes, articles, reviews, top uh, contest giveaways, everything you need to know will be over at ComputerAmerica.com. Uh, give us a like, give us a follow on social media, uh, check out the podcast, and yeah, I think that's everything. So everyone, let's go ahead and uh, get things started. So as I said before, Nathan Evans, PopZara.com. Nathan, welcome back onto the program. How you doing? Hey, Ben, what's going on? So um, I don't think I've ever felt older and more out of touch than I have right now. Like this moment. Well, for those who don't know, Ben and I were talking before the show. Um, I've upgraded my microphone and I've joined what millions of millions and millions of people have already done. Like I've seen babies with high quality microphones and I get jealous, (laughs) but I'm still figuring it out because I'm so out of touch because I won't, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I'm using the same technology for like 10 years now because it works. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you get something that works, you stick with it because you think this is it. It's sort of like, um, you ever see the actor Fred Willard? Uh, Fred Willard, no. Yeah, Fred. he was the human that was in Wally. He's a great comedian from the 70s. He passed away. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. But he's but he's great. He's, all, he's in all those um, uh, he's in all those great mockumentaries. He, he's, see, uh, he, he, he was the, uh, the head of the network for Anchorman. Yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. He's one of the funniest guys ever. But look at his hairstyle. He's had that hairstyle since the 70s. Mm-hmm. He found it and he's like, I got it. I'm done. I'm not changing a thing. And he kept it (laughs) to the day he died and it works for him. You know, some people are like that. Um, I've decided because, you know, upgrades are cool and I am a tech guy. Sometimes I'll upgrade my microphone, which has set me on a path to hell. So I've gone through, (laughs) we talked about this before and I don't want to like shame anybody, but um, you know, we like blue microphones. We talked about this. I think Logitech purchased them. Uh, Great microphones. Awesome. But when you have a small room that's not like outfitted professionally and padded, like I told you, I could hear like it picks up like fleas farting in my room. Yeah, like blue everything. Micro- and, and and that was our you know kind of review when we reviewed the Yeti. Uh, I'm sorry, the Yeti Pro, and we actually used it for quite a, quite some time. But uh, yeah, that what led us to uh, led us to upgrade as well is that it's a great entry point. Like if you want something you know a little bit better than like a twenty dollar Logitech headset then you go up to like an $80 blue microphone, but then, you know, you can, you can definitely get better if you go a little bit above well, or even around the same price. But you know what though? Here's the PSA for everybody. If you're interested, because podcasts are becoming popular. I mean, Megan Markle's got a podcast now, right? Yeah. Megan's get, Megan's making it happen. She beat Joe Rogan. So you know what that means? There's going to be a flood of podcasts coming out or what people think are podcasts. But anyway, <laughs> Um, It doesn't have to be, uh, the entry point doesn't have to be bad, but here's the PSA to make people feel better. Um, You don't need a $100 microphone to do a podcast because $100 microphone might actually sound worse than your earbuds. They might actually sound worse because everything in your room is going to be picked up by that thing. There's a reason why it's a quality microphone. It's not a smart microphone. It's a quality one, which means usually, and you know this, Ben, these things were built for like studios, 
mm-hmm. things were built for people. Like they assume you're going to have sound padding. They assume you're going to have all this stuff. They assume you know a what you're doing. Highly controlled environment. Yes. So like with Windows and God bless Windows is great, but like, or I don't even know about the Mac part, but Windows, especially Windows 11, there are a million little dip switches that you have to flick on for everything. And you know mm-hmm. about this as well as I do. If you're going analog, uh, once you once you put in a new device or sound device, you have to like watch that device across <laughs> software. Like you go on Skype, takes over. Zoom takes over. Windows takes over. Sliders everywhere. But um, but anyway, the I I had the blue I had the blue nano micro uh, nano and mm-hmm. uh, Yeti nano. Sorry, and it was excellent. In fact, in some ways, it was better than the the regular the regular Yeti. It's yeah. it's a newer device. It's got a better condenser. But um, without without giving anybody too much credit, full disclosure, um, our my own uh, my own uh, senior producer at the Pop Star Podcast, Chris Mitchell, who you've met or talked to, he uh, he turned me on to a company called Neat. Um, and full disclosure, yeah, there we go. They do they did this. But here's the thing, it works. It's uh, Turtle Beach, the gaming headset company, bought them. Yeah. Here's the here's the crazy thing. Um, it feels cheaper. No offense. It doesn't feel as solid as the Yetis, it's more, it's more plasticky, but it's like a gaming headset in a microphone in that you don't need like 50 pieces of software to use it. I don't have to go through the Logitech's <laughs> G hub. I don't have to go through this. It, it has a lot of that stuff built in mm-hmm. and yeah, the option, the options are not as vast. I can't sound like a chipmunk, but, but I think even you and I talked like just plugging it in sounds better out of the box than a blue because I'm too stupid to learn the software and I don't sound like a chipmunk on accident. And I don't sound like, you know, like, burr, 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 burr. no, yeah. The, it, and, it, it's uh, not full of bass. I, I know that, um, you know, with, with, other, with other microphones I've ran into, uh, either you sound very bassy. I know that for a while there, you were making fun of me for sounding like Barry white, yeah. um, you know, thing. Yes, exactly. Things like that. Um, and you know, trust me, if you, if you want to get professional, I mean, and anyone watching the video portion can kind of see Yikes. what I got Take going that on away. here. That's- that's audio porn right there. Yes, the, this is like something that we use for the show with all the different you know knobs and switches and all that kind of thing, um, you know. But that's not really what people want to do. They want to plug something in and have something sound good. Uh, and I think there's a lot of options out there, including. Oh, uh, and I, I'll admit I never heard of Neat, but I'm glad that they're working. I had right it, I had an, I had an either to be honest with you. And let's be honest, there are tons of microphones out there that are pretty good. Yeah. But no, um, and even on a pure technical level, like this one outspecs the, um, it even outspecs the newest uh, Yeti Nano, like only because mm-hmm. of no, no offense to the Nanos, uh, no offense to the Yetis, but they're like 10 years old. Yeah. Like they're really solid analog equipment that was built for a studio. And it reminds me of what we talked about when um, like Wacom or Wacom, the, the graphic tablets, if you wanted to be a digital artist, you needed to have all this expensive equipment. But in the last five years or so, the proliferation of tablets and um, touchscreen laptops have made it the entry point so much easier. Yeah. Like things really are getting easier. And that's not to say like, well, it's not as good as the Wacom. It's probably not. But if you're just beginning and you don't have money, that's pretty good. Yeah. The, the, you know, uh, I remember back in the day when uh, when Photoshop and, and the entire Adobe suite was like 1500 bucks. And then before that, you know, you had like maybe GIMP and things like that. Uh, there mm-hmm. should be options between zero and fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, and that's happening all over tech. And that's or definitely should say, a good thing. Should be options without pirating. Let's be honest yes. here. Like if you want to do things <laughs> legitimate, if you want to do things legitimately, um, I think companies for better for us have discovered that subscription stuff and lower tiered stuff is good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, but I will do one, one last part of my PSA that we can move on. Sure. By the way, you notice no plosives. I don't need a pop filter because I don't, <laughs> I don't sound like Roger rabbit, you know, yes. like, but um, no, uh, I think YouTube announced they're going to be getting into the podcast game. Cause of course everybody is, uh, um, but they're Twitter part- also announced it the other day too. I just want to do a PSA. So I, I mentioned Meghan Markle. I didn't want to give the impression I follow that. I don't follow that at all. It's more like <laughs> I follow Meghan Markle the same way I follow like Bigfoot. People claim to have seen Bigfoot. People say they love Bigfoot. Some woman said she had Bigfoot's babies. Go with God. But with me, I don't care about Bigfoot. I just know that people like Bigfoot. I know people like Meghan Markle for some reason. But that podcast she had took 30 people and $30 million dollars. Um, that's not a podcast at this point. That's a production. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I've often felt the same way about, um, you know, maybe NPR or CBS or CNN ooh, or like any of these news organizations. That's what I was going to say. They do the same thing. Yeah. But you got to mention it, uh, NPR. So YouTube is supposed to be partnering with NPR. You know, NPR, they got their charms. They used to be better. But what NPR does is not podcasting either. That is a professional radio station yeah. with extremely expensive equipment and production values. Like when Serial came out and, and it started this whole true crime nonsense where it convinced mm-hmm. millions of women that serial killers are hot. Um, <laughs> the truth is that's not a podcast. That's a radio production. That is a, pro- that is a professional production with expensive equipment. A podcast is like you and me sitting with a cheap microphone making mistakes. In, I, I hear gunshots in the background. I hear motorcycles, car alarms. I hear all that crap. Um, and, you know, we're going to say, um, and we're going to make mistakes. That's a podcast. Right. Warts and all. Not a thirty million dollar production. We uh, and 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 uh, it you know goes without saying that Computer America went from a radio show to a podcast. And mm-hmm. uh, trust me, a, a lot of what we kind of stripped away was you know obviously we stripped away a lot of ads, but we also stripped away you know uh, some some of the the professional soundboard operator. We stripped away you know uh, just a, a lot of the kind of professionalism. But at the same time, you get a lot more in return from podcasts, which is obviously why they're you know, gaining in such popularity is that you do get kind of that feeling that you are listening in on a genuine conversation versus, you know, kind of watching the latest hit show on TV or something like that. You know, exactly. it's, uh, th- there, there's benefits to both. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but, uh, yeah, podcast is getting that, uh, that good old shine from people who are just pump, who are pumping money into it, hoping that, Hey, this is going to be, you know, the next big podcast. And, of course, uh, Nathan. Let's face it: ten million dollars worth of advertising can get, can definitely make you the next big podcast. The truth is, is that celebrity. I mean, you know, Middle America has found a way to monetize what used to be sort of guerrilla radio. Um, and let's just say the halcyon old, the good old days when anybody could just pick it up and do whatever they want and say whatever they wanted. They're gone. Um, yeah. The censor, the censors have got on top of it. People pay way too much attention. You have you have like people like Joe Rogan and um, you know you have like Adam Adam Carey. You have a lot of these people that did the did the groundwork to you know to sort of um, introduce people how to do it. And Apple for a long time for a long long time Apple was the sole you know the sole proprietor of this. They controlled the market because they controlled the downflow. Not, mm-hmm. not the case anymore. Everybody's getting into it, and that's good. And I don't want to sound old and say the good old days are gone, but in a way they are because now we're going to see celebrity podcasts. We're going to see this and that, and <laughs> and it's going to be it's going to be about promoting a product. Let's yeah, and and in my mind, let's face it, people are going to be first uh, nowadays. If you have not listened to a podcast and then you jump into the podcast world, you're going to be pushed. Um, you know, the top 10, which are going to be professional productions mm-hmm. with a certain level of quality. If you then tune into random podcasts by two guys sitting on a couch talking about movies, uh, you know, and their mics crap and, you know, one of them gets up to go get a drink of water and you hear, you know, mm-hmm. glasses tinking in the background and they come back and, you know, what, like they're the first introduction is kind of what people will expect. Like, Oh, this Mm -hmm. is podcast. Uh, you know, the Joe Rogan experience is what a podcast is. And then they hear what podcasts used to be. And they'd be like, "Eh, you know, that's, this is not a good podcast because they're comparing it to what they're going to hear first. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I suppose that's just evolution. Right. But, um, of course, but I, I, but I know that, you know, going forward though, my last thought about this is that, um, you know, regardless of the quality or anything, if you have something to say, um, Take a chance. You never know. Like you never know what's you never know what's going to be popular anymore. Like, like the sky's the limit. Like I, I, I hear podcasts. I hear content that I would never in a million years think would ever be popular. That's mm-hmm. twenty times more popular than anything I will ever be associated with. And I'm not <laughs> jealous. I'm actually happy that someone is is making money off this. I really am. But just do me a favor. Under no circumstances, please don't do not refer to people who take the time and create something from scratch as an influencer. Please, like if you're listening to me, don't use that word. Influencer is second only to the word fur baby as my (laughs) most hated words in the English language. Your pet is not a fur baby and you are not an influencer. 
you know, an, an influencer is uh, kind of what we hated from yesteryear, which is you're popular because you're popular. And, you know, it was like, you don't have a skill, you don't have a talent, you're just popular. Well, and But hey, now that's a legitimate career path, it seems. But hey, let's, uh, yeah. let's switch up just a little bit to talk about um, a rumor. And this goes into... Um, I, I had a great segue that you mentioned about um, about Spotify and YouTube and different uh, different services offering different things. There was a much better segue than what I'm trying to set up here, but I wanted to jump right into the one that you sent over, which is Netflix and their uh, lower tier ad supported. Uh, subscription service that they're kind of mulling over if they're you know maybe going to bring out a seven to nine dollar monthly price for an ad supported tier and uh, nathan you were there um when netflix at its last uh financial quarter or at least it was like q1 financials they were like okay uh we lost a hundred thousand subscribers instead of gaining a million and in the next coming year we're expecting to lose like another couple million subscribers instead of growing and uh yeah uh you know their their stock price went from like five or six hundred all the way down to like a hundred dollars or whatever it was um and then they said something that everyone freaked out about which is we're thinking about bringing ads to netflix and i think a lot of people took that as Every tier is going to have ads. That's not what they said, but everyone kind of took it that way. So now we're getting more details about what it could possibly look like. What do you think about a lower cost ad supported tier? Of course. I mean, I'm all for it as long as I don't have to use it. Um, (laughs) I mean, I don't like ads. I don't like ads on my streaming service, so I'm willing to pay the premium to get rid of them. Um, It's only because part of it's prejudice. Part of it's that I I have um, bad memories of Crackle. And I have bad memories of the early days of ads when you'd be served the same ad a hundred times in a row. Yes. Um, the thing about Netflix, so Netflix was revolutionary in a way that's become de- uh, like de-evolutionary. Uh, they were the ones who got rid of the ads. They, did all, they didn't do a la carte. You got everything at once. You paid for one subscription. You got everything. That was inter- And to be honest with you, none of the other services really have that. Like uh, you go on Disney Plus, you go on Hulu, you go on uh, Amazon, you go on Paramount. They're always writers like, yeah. oh, you can't watch this. You got to get this. You got to get this. Got to get this. Got to get this. <laughs> oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. This is why people pirate. But they um, with Netflix, they've been pretty good about just saying we're Netflix. Boom, boom, boom. And the truth of the matter is, though, I mean, I sent you another story today that explains everything about um, Netflix cancels another pro- high profile show. We, we can definitely branch off into that yeah. or even include that in this conversation but, as well. But the fact of the matter is um, the fact of the matter is that Netflix has been spending like a drunken sailor. They have been spending without regard to content creation. They're not playing the long game at all. They're doing everything exactly the opposite of what they did when they branched out in original content 10 years ago with like house of cards and, um, I think it was Lily Hammer, the first show, a yeah. show that I actually liked, by the way. But the fact of the matter is, is that you you take a show, you plop the whole thing down, you get people, then you keep plopping. And the and the and the thing was, we're going to create boiler, you know, we're going to create um, water tower conversations. But by the time you finish, there's going to be something new. There's going to be something mm-hmm. new. Going to be something new. And along the way, you had up, you know, had upstarts like Hulu, then Disney Plus, then Disney Plus Hulu, then Amazon. I don't <laughs> even think what Amazon does counts. Because here's the thing, I don't, I don't think Amazon's really a competitor for the exact same reason. Because um, Amazon is a shipping service; they are a store. The the they, video streaming they're, they're on adding Amazon value to their Prime yeah. subscription. Yeah, yeah, it, it's like disingenuous a little bit to count Amazon Prime subscribers as viewers because nobody's getting that service. They're getting Amazon Prime. They're getting a video service with it. Yeah. Um, but Amazon has been able to create a momentum out of less than Netflix has. They've had hit shows this year. They've had, you know, they've had things like the boys. They've had other things. Um, I like real time. I, you know, a huge fan of the books and and the show itself was pretty good. But Amazon put out a very distressing thing that I think Netflix should listen to is that they're spending what a billion dollars on this Lord of the Rings show. And Mm -hmm. they're making statement. They're making statements to the effect, like the quality comes second to the price. Like, Oh, look how expensive we are. Look how big we are. It, it reminds me of that Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns was trying to buy his way into a film into a film competition. So he mm-hmm. hired like the Mexican equivalent of Steven Spielberg, <laughs> and he just pumps so much money. He's like, it's the most expensive. It's the biggest. Like he, they're talking about Lord of the Rings like it's a, a fancy diamond, you know. And they oh, we're going to bet the future on this. 
And they haven't done a very good job of making that show lovable. And I know there's been some backlash because there's backlash with everything. But the fact of the matter is you can't spend a billion dollars and expect that to be the future. Like if, if you're spending a billion dollars on a TV show, like I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm, okay. This is the funny thing on Netflix. They spend all this money to make, they spend all this hundreds of millions of dollars to make big, big movies. They spend hundreds of million dollars to make shows, but their biggest programs are like indie productions and yeah. Korean imports that cost a you, fraction you're, of it. You're definitely reminding me of, uh, of the whole metaverse thing. Let's face it, Facebook and, and uh, you know, Facebook and Meta, they've just pumped money a- into developers. They said they were going to put in like what it was like 10 billion into uh, content, uh, you know, uh, app developers for the metaverse. And they're going to do this. Uh, and, and like, it looks like uh, hot garbage every time you see a screenshot of the metaverse. Yeah. But hey, they spent a lot of money on it. But it looks inferior to cheap versions that are already available. Yeah. Like other people have built better versions of this because people know that you're going to get this slick produced thing by Facebook or Microsoft or whatever, but it's not going to be as wild west. It's not going to be as innovative as the upstarts who don't have those restrictions. And this is a classic case of economics of dinosaurs versus mammals. The dinosaurs exist. They're big, they're bulky. They have the advantage of being fat and big, but the mammals are small and they're more agile and they don't, and they have the advantage of not having all that baggage. So you, this is like, we saw this happen, Ben, in like 1999, when you had like old media give way to new media, you have mm-hmm. new companies spring, you had Yahoo, Google, you had Facebook, you know, you had Amazon, these new companies replaced the old Netflix replaced Blockbuster. And I think Netflix is in an interesting place. By the way, Netflix isn't going anywhere. Like the stock, that's just manipulation. Yes. Netflix is doing great. Let's be honest. Netflix is still doing pretty good, but their business model is based off hemorrhaging cash, hemorrhaging cash left and right. And I can't uh, imagine anybody yeah. would look at a budget for things like Resident Evil or um, uh, what was what that was anime the that, on that got thing? way too much. But the fact, but but you look at this. You look at you look at Resident Evil, the show we're talking about that got canceled after less than a season. You have the um, Cowboy Bebop. You have all these big productions. You have a three hundred million dollar Ryan Gosling movie. Who the hell looked at who the hell looked at a three hundred million dollar budget and said Ryan Gosling? The guy is box office poison. Chris Evans, box office poison. Oh, he was they, in Marvel. They, they gave, uh, uh, oh my God, uh, who is that? Uh, man, a uh, comedy actor. They gave him like a five, Ben Stiller. No, not Ben. Was it Ben? No, oh, Adam Sandler. There we go. Yeah, but those, that's worked out for them though. That's worked out great. <laughs> like the Adam Sandler movies are the most watched movies on Netflix. And now they're but pouring still, money into Kevin Hart. They in for like what? Like $300 million for five separate movies yeah, before the movies exactly. were even like written? Yeah, exactly. But that's, you see, that's what everyone's doing now. It's about content procurement, whether it's video games, whether it's streaming channels, see, and, it's and, about and, buying and, licenses. And that's what I was thinking was that Netflix, as, as much as I think a lot of people would look at Netflix and go, you know, oh, hey, a year ago, two years ago, whatever it was, five years ago, they said that we're going to spend $15 billion on new programming. And everyone said, wow, that's a lot of money. You know, hopefully a lot of it's good. And uh, yeah, spoiler. Eh. But um, they all, I, I think Netflix was very, very smart though. They saw what was happening with all the launching of the new streaming services. Mm-hmm. And then if they didn't do that, I mean, let's face it, they had to spend, what was it, like a billion dollars for the rights to Seinfeld, I think, right? Or Friends or whatever it was. Well, you see, that's, a, that's another thing though. Like you have Seinfeld and Friends, right? Two mm-hmm. shows that are 20 years past date, like they're 20 years old at this point. I mean, sorry, 30 years old at this point, but they still drive more viewership than almost anything today. Like but it, it would cost them too much to fill out their catalog with shows that people liked. So they had to create new stuff. I mean, this was a good move. Like mm-hmm. as much as they spent, it was a good move because they would they would not be able to survive if they had to pay everyone well, to fill out a catalog. The funny thing about Netflix, though, is that their movie stuff hasn't been as successful. Like, I don't I want to say commercially because it, it's irrelevant. Like, we don't even know what the movies do at this point. I don't know how a three hundred million dollar movie makes money for Netflix. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is a TV show like the TV shows, especially the hits like Stranger Things and the Korean dramas and, you know, Squid Game. Like every once in a while, they come across a blockbuster like and this is something Netflix does that nobody else does. They create mega blockbusters. Like maybe not every day, maybe not everything. Maybe Resident Evil is a failure, which it should. Resident Evil should have been a slam dunk. But the fact of the matter is they have these things that are original 
they permeate the culture in a way that nobody else does. Like nobody else is permeating culture the way Netflix is as far as like original content, like nobody like HBO has game of Thrones, right? Yeah. I can't, I don't even know what people think of the new game of Thrones. Apparently it broke records for HBO, but all the advertising was using imagery from the old game of Thrones. Yeah. Definitely trying to harken and, back to it, which is so weird. Cause like they, they didn't exactly leave their old series on a high note. So I don't know why you'd really get no. that, but whatever. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. It's the cycle of franchises. This is a true thing. The way franchises go, you create a really big thing. It becomes epic. And 10 years later, you reboot it with a prequel. Like it happens Lord all the time. Rings. Or like like Lord of the Rings, like Game of Thrones, like everything else. It's all pre- like in 10 years, we're going to have a, a, a Stranger Things prequel like takes place in the 60s. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, but Netflix is doing pretty good, but, but they're doing the right thing. They're creating a new ad supported. Look, the prices we talked about, seven to nine dollars speculation. But if it's only seven dollars, that's pretty impressive because that's like 50 percent off the, the standard price, which has been jacked up way high. That's the problem. Like you can get a whole year of Disney plus for like less than a hundred bucks. So, you know, so from, from what I'm thinking, they're either going to try to match the lowest tier of Disney plus, uh, you know, so either they're going to come in at like five or six, like, and that might've just been promo Disney plus might be more now, but mm-hmm. they're going to try to match the lowest price of Disney plus, or they're going to go at the high end, the $9 and have as minimal ads as possible. So, you know, maybe two, uh, 60 second ads every 30 minutes or something like that. Uh, so if they go well, lower it, and, and hey, you know, they might actually have uh, both. They might have like a chock full of ads uh, tier and a well, light ad tier. Who knows? Here's the thing, though. I don't necessarily think the ads are going to be what we think. Like one thing we haven't considered is your watching habits are very valuable. And my quite, my thing is, is that Netflix doesn't share their data with anybody except mm-hmm. except Nielsen a little bit. The fact of the matter is um, Netflix could sell. They, they theoretically could sell your viewing habits as a alternative revenue source. So if you have ad supported, if you have ad supported, the advertisers are clearly going to want to know the metrics, which Netflix doesn't share with anybody. So if but they're they going to serve them. ads from Toyota, yeah, Toyota is one of is if it's Toyota, for example, they're going to want to know who's watching. That's mm-hmm. part of the deal. When you advertise, they want to know what the audience is. Netflix yes. has to share it. So the idea, I think, the idea would be that they could um, subsidize. Like a, like a glut of advertising with a trade-off for viewing habits because Netflix right now is the gold standard, but it is also like the, like the, um, the holy grail because nobody knows who watches anything. That's the biggest mystery. Like we, I could go to Box Office Mojo right now, owned by Amazon. I could find out how much money Top Gun Maverick made. It made a lot. I know how yeah. much more money Top Gun Maverick made than Lightyear. I know this because I can look at the metrics. Everybody shares because everything's public. Netflix, they, they do some nebulous BS. Oh, 500 billion minutes. For, what does that mean? Minutes? What does that mean? Can you imagine yeah. how deflating that would be for an actor? Hey, heard, hey Ben, heard your new show. Heard you watch, somebody watch 40 million minutes. What the <laughs> hell does that mean? Does it mean yeah, anything? Uh, it, it, so. it means that people had trouble finding the remote for 40 million minutes. Yeah, it's, um, uh, who the heck knows? But I will say that Netflix coming out with this, uh, I'm glad that they are kind of uh, clarifying this because I assumed when this news came out, like I said before, that ads were not coming to every single tier like people assumed. And people were like, if I see ads on Netflix, I'm canceling Netflix. It was like, you know, this is going to be a whole different opt-in kind of tier well, and it's going to have ads. So Can I say something though? Like, yeah. we already have ads on Netflix. If you've ever tried For to use Netflix, stuff, yes. it's all like Paramount Plus is the same way. I'm trying to watch an episode of Star Trek. I see an episode for RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, I get it, but that's not my market, right? Like, I don't want to see an ad every time I'm trying to watch on my paid subscription. So they do find ways to get around it with this intra ad stuff. It's not like, like I I watch, when I watch YouTube, I watch YouTube on a browser that has ad block. It is a very different experience than if I watch YouTube on my Apple TV. I watch YouTube on Apple TV. It's like 25% ads. It's it's unwatchable. Yeah. on the browser, it's pleasant. Yeah. It's different. Well, okay. So we're going to uh, put Netflix aside and we're going to talk about a few other things. I, since we just talked about rumors and, uh, and that whole thing. And by the way, actually real quick, Netflix Resident Evil uh, getting canceled. I mean, was that because they didn't have enough minutes watched or something? Or I think it's a couple things. Um, I think it's a couple things. One, and there's no way around it. The show is not well received. Um, the show is one of the 
the most divisive shows I've ever seen. And I haven't seen the show, so I'm not going to sit here and say it was terrible. But people that I know have watched it. I have not heard any positivity about it. The clips that I've seen do not look like Resident Evil. Um, it's one of those in the Resident Evil universe things where instead of being actually based on a game, it's based on the lore. Uh, we we had a review for the last Resident Evil movie that came out last year called Welcome to Raccoon City, yeah. which was atrocious. And that's <laughs> the thing. About, well, you know, we said in the review, it's like, I don't understand who's watching this franchise at Capcom. Who's the who's in charge of the Bible? Because every time we see a Resident Evil, it looks different. The characters are different. Right. Races are swapped. Genders are swapped. The stories don't make sense. There's It's like nobody cares to harmonize this thing. And and it fails. I, I mean, yeah. what do they expect? It fails. You know, and, and, and as someone who had great memories playing the arcade games and, and stuff like that, um, you know, when I was younger, like, I feel like you didn't Resident you Evil, didn't you didn't play Resident Evil in the arcade. Because there was no, no Resident Evil arcade. That's House of the Dead. You're that, a, that House you of are the Dead. a look at you. I caught you in a lie then. That was House of the Dead. Scandal. I think there are Resident Evil games. What? Uh Residents uh You're thinking Evil. of House of the Dead. Yeah, I, I am as well, but um are you sure By the way, great franchise. There might be there might have been like a spin off, but no, for the most part it's um it's been a very strange video game journey for Resident Evil. Um, most of it pretty good. Most of well, it pretty guess, good. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, I guess it's made by Capcom. Gun Survivor 2, Biohazard. Um, very doesn't similar. Count. Doesn't count. Okay. All right. All right. Doesn't count. I mean, okay. That's like a Dave and, that's like a Dave and Buster's game. Yeah. Okay. Either way. That's like, um, like a game, a game you can play when you're drunk. I don't know who is really a fan because like, I know they had a couple of good movies, um, you know, way back when, but like the series itself didn't really catch on like the walking dead. It didn't catch on like, like it, it didn't have that core audience where it was like, you know, yeah, I really love the, uh, the walking dead. I really love, um, mm. you know, resident evil. And like, it never really solidified that fan base. Um, well, at, at least that's it, what it felt I mean, like to me. You're, you're right in a way that the, the fan base is there, but the fan base has been ill served. Like, the most successful video game adaptation of all time is Resident Evil for movies. Like there's been seven movies. I mean, you can debate the quality of them, but they're popular, like made money. And it was a big, it lasted 20 years. That's pretty impressive. And yeah. people, people, people like me were really excited to see a reboot. Oh, let's, let's actually go back into this game. But can I be honest with you? The games themselves are kind of goofy. Like even though they, they look photo real, they're kind of ridiculous in their stories right. and blotting. And uh, I don't know if I'd really want to watch that in a movie. I kind of like, you know, you're willing to take a lot of leeway with stories if they're ridiculous, if it's a video game. Like, for example, like, I don't know how you take seriously a villain who cackles, stabs himself with a syringe and grows eyeballs on his butt and like three <laughs> arms. Like, like, I don't know how you reconcile that and say, well, that's drama. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, um, and you can't have it be too serious. Then there's no joy in it. True. But I don't know. Okay. Like I said, it's we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So Resident Evil canceled, uh, all that good stuff. Let's go from rumor to rumor. And I wanted you to, you know, kind of, uh, this is supposedly for 2023 and it has to do with Apple. Apple is mm -hmm. filing trademarks for reality branding and it's a mixed reality headset. It's either going to be full virtual reality or mixed reality where information is overlaid on what you see around you. And Apple has in the past said that they're going to get into mixed reality. Uh, they have trademarks for uh, Reality One, Reality Pro, and Reality Processor, where you can Im uh, imagine. So, and also Reality OS cropped up in the Apple code a little while ago. So the trademark were filed in the EU, UK, US, Australia, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, Costa Rica, and Uruguay, because why not Uruguay? Um, sure. But uh, yeah, what do you think about Apple supposedly in a 2023 time frame coming out with mixed reality? Is it just more of a um, finally or what? Two, for, two minds of this, two minds. Um, the safe bet is this is just to cover their ass. Like companies trademark all the time. So they mm -hmm. have this stuff on file has nothing. To, it may never come out. It's just there to secure it so no one else does. Yes. Like, like if you don't believe me, go to the store and see how many crappy products are called iHome, iRadio, iWhatever. This is what <laughs> happens when Apple doesn't act. 
So <laughs> they're getting a bar. The other thing is Apple is is loaned to jump on the bandwagon. Like they their laptops still don't have touchscreen. They don't really have VR. Like they don't have a lot of things that they're supposed to have according to the, the professionals. Um, you know how I feel about VR. I think VR is a fine gimmick. It's a fine niche thing that can work in the right environment. It has not become mainstream because the companies running it are incompetent at producing a product that can be mainstream. It's just the way it goes. I'm sorry, it just happens. Um, that being said, I, I find AR infinitely more valuable than VR. Mm -hmm. I've said this before. I said it again, AR, like you can, I can't, I, I, I can't sit here and convince you to use VR instead of your monitor. Right. Right. Like, Hey, put on this bulky headset. That's going to weigh down your neck and give you vertigo. So you can, you can interact with preschool, like Mark Zuckerberg. That's not attractive, <laughs> but AR is like a very slim, like layer. It doesn't weigh anything. And it adds to what you have. And let's be honest, every sci-fi movie you've ever seen uses AR. Yeah. It's, you, you, can, you don't even have to imagine it working. It just works. And to me, anything that augments what we already have is the way to go. Like, it just makes sense. It, like, this is going to happen at some point. Um, I don't know if Apple's going to do it. I mean, Apple could do it if they're invested in it. But they're, as a developer, I don't know. Well, Google tried like 10 years ago with, uh, you know, with the Google headset. <laughs> Google uh, tries a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and, but, but they actually put out a product, which is uh, unusual for Google. So uh, um, a nice little hardware beta. Um, well, again, again, yeah. Apple, Apple might, I mean, sorry, uh, Google might be like the standard bearer of crappy releases. Like we talked about, I mean, this is a company that's become sort of almost comical, almost comically infamous for releasing stuff they don't support. Right. Whereas Apple, on the other hand, is exactly the opposite. They might be a little too conservative. They might be a little too like a little too tight butted to release something they know is going to flop just because everyone else is doing it. Apple is looking at the same numbers we are, Ben. Apple is looking at the numbers and like there's no money in VR. There's no money. It's a money dump. Um, there's no future in metaverse because nobody wants it. Like nobody wants it. Like and so, but people, advertisers I think, do because let's face it, it, it was built on the promise that hey, uh, you're going to be able to put your advertising right in people's eyeballs and it's going to be super engaging. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, everyone else, they're like, wow, that sounds awful. <laughs> but yeah. well, again, though, but but I mean, you have to you have to take into account like um, you have to take into account like it's a pyrrhic victory. Okay, I can put my advertising right in front of your face, but if it's going to make me hate your product, then I don't want to do that. And yeah. so th it's that balance. And, and to be honest with you, VR is a bridge too far. It is too, it's, it's ironically for virtual reality, it separates you so much from reality, then you can't enjoy it. Um, I'll, I'll just say this. Here's my last metaphor. Sure. In early 2000s, I remember when the generational change was coming from CD to like, what was the next thing? What was the next big thing? And of course, let's just play it by ear. Uh, yeah. CD audio was going to give way to either digital audio or super audio CD. I think super audio CD was the format that was chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't work. And then it became DVD audio. The problem was in order to enjoy DVD audio, right? You put your CD in it, put your CD in the car, put it wherever you could put a headphones, you could listen to it, whatever on a transistor radio. But in order to listen to super audio CD or DVD audio, you needed to have a nice 5.1 system. You have nice speakers. You had to sit right in the right hotspot. Like, right. in order to enjoy it fully, you had to give up all the other things that you enjoy with music, like mobility, like usability, flexibility. And you mm -hmm. know what came out? MP3s. MP3s did not give a F. They said, <laughs> take me anywhere you want. You know what? I sound like crap, but I'll go with you. You could put 100 of me on a flash drive. Like, people chose fuzzy MP3s over high fidelity DVD audio because you could do more with it. And that's right. exactly what VR versus AR with. You can go outside with AR. You can't go outside with VR. If you do, you're going to get hit by a car. Don't do that. <laughs> but with AR, I, you can yeah. look at buildings and see advertising. Like, it, you know what I'm talking about? It's like Tom Cruise and Minority Report with someone's eyeballs. You can see different things. So, so I, I agree with you to a point where VR is going to have a space in a room in your house and it's going to be like having a home theater. You know, if you want it, it's going to be an amazing experience. Have it set up VR you know what in your you house. Just described? You know yeah. what you just described? A bathroom. <laughs> Close. But AR, to your point, AR is going to be used everywhere else. AR has application mm -hmm. everywhere else, uh, yeah. uh, everywhere else outside that one room. It's useful. It's useful. And yeah. it may not be 100% as immersive, but because it allows the real world to bleed through, it becomes more immersive by default. 
Like right. I said, you have a you have a monitor. You have like well, you have like fifty monitors, Ben. But like, just pretend <laughs> I, you're normal yeah. and you have one monitor. Right. That one monitor, you can see everything, but you can also see to the left and the right and the up, the down. You can see your cat jumping on the keyboard. The real world still interacts with your screen. Mm-hmm. You're willing to give up full immersion because it does the job, and that's what AR is going to be. AR is not going to take you out of the real world. AR is going to add to the real world. And as long as as long as the real world can bleed through, you have all the benefits of VR, right? With none of the none of the, well, almost all the benefits. Excuse me. You're not going to be able to like have virtual sex with a cat lady, but <laughs> but what I mean is if that's your thing. But um, but with AR though, you're going to be able to look at uh, Japanese characters and translate them. Right. You're going to be able to recognize sign language. You're going to be able to see digital signs. You're going to see things in a way we haven't seen before. You're going to have virtual keyboards. You're going to have all this cool stuff that, if used properly, could change people's lives. Specifically, I hate to use the word disabled, but disabled people especially are going to benefit from this massively. Like This is going to be a big thing if it's handled correctly. The disabled community will definitely benefit from it, but I think more so people will... Um, you know, just enjoy having a layer of information that we already use. I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, I was just on vacation. I went to Austin, Texas. And when we were there, it was like, you know, you Google things to do in that city. You Google restaurant reviews. You Google, you know, all these different things to do in the city. And imagine having all that information just overlaid oh. on your immediate surroundings it takes it, it takes away that you know go to, go somewhere else to find the information and then bring, you know go go to that place and just overlays it on the real world and that's you, very effective you brought up a good point that i completely forgot about like if you go to museums you, uh, museums have those little codes there where you can uh, listen to exhibits yep. on your radio like i remember 10 years ago nintendo partnered with me i think it was smithsonian where you could actually like download stuff on your ds like mm-hmm. it's it's pretty incredible like but now we don't have to get like a nintendo system we we're all going to have this stuff on our phones it's going to be very interesting to see how they do it and i and to be honest with you i'm not really impressed with a lot of stuff apple does these days right. but apple is the only proven company that has been able to introduce new, new products like this yeah. and i really hope that if it happens it happens with them in a way because then i know it won't be a it won't be a fleeting <laughs> thing it won't we're not going to get some half baked cookie that's called a cookie and it's going to turn people off. We're going to get something that might actually work. At least we hope so. That's the, that's the thing. I think Apple kind of shows that, especially with um, their first new product after Steve Jobs, which is, you know, the, the Apple watch where it was like the Apple watch wasn't an immediate success. But at this point, I think when it comes to fitness tracking or smartwatches, like Apple watch is just on its own, you know, it's just a, a league above everything else. And don't get me wrong, there are others that do exactly what Apple Watch does. It's just in terms of like, you know, uh, the iconic look and same thing with like the, the ear, you know, the, uh, the AirPods and stuff like that. Like Apple just has a way of coming into a market and disrupting or influencing trends or things like that. And that's what, rea- you know, AR, XR, VR, whatever you want to call it, that's what it needs. It needs someone to kind of come in and say, this is the trend. This is what you can expect from this. And I think Apple getting into it is going to be a really good thing. It has to be though. I mean, here's my final thought though, about this Um, Apple as of late has not been the company it was 15, 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It's been something else. Mm -hmm. It has been more of an as also ran company. Like it, like I actually think like Amazon or Microsoft is more innovative as a technology company. And I think even Microsoft has put a lot of money into HoloLens and they put a lot of money into R&D, which we may never see, of course. You have a company like Sony that's just done mediocre VR imitators to Oculus, and that's fine. But the fact of the matter is people forget Apple as a company rose to prominence by introducing desktop publishing to people. That was their original intent, to provide a desktop publishing platform for people, a computer. Um, And then they eventually switched to music. If if AR is to be a, a new thing, there has to be an application for it that is so immediate and is so obvious that once you see it, it makes sense. I can't look at preschool metaverse. You would have to torture me to play that. There's no <laughs> application to that. But what I'm saying is if, if you look, if, again, if they show something that shows calculators being pulled up, like let's say you're grocery shopping, you pull up a calculator and your glasses or something, or something happens or you scan a ticket or something. It has to be so, I mean, think about transit. Like you could do like uh, Metro transit. Yeah. Yeah. 
it has to be so immediate. It needs to be game changing the way the iPhone looked to people. Like when you see it, like, you know what? Everything else in the past is the past. This is the future going forward. This is it. It's never going away. But every attempt to make this so far, uh, crappy products from Google, crappy products from Snap, crappy products. I think there's one from Ray-Ban now that looks terrible. Like yeah. they are so desperate to make it look useful. They don't know what they're doing because <laughs> all they see is influencers and advertising. They don't see the boring stuff that people actually do. Yeah. They don't see it. So yeah. uh, and you know um to to little to no fanfare I mean uh Google Earth and Google Maps you know that probably had more of an influence than uh you know a lot of things that Google put out but yeah Ooh. it's just Oh they oh they absolutely have. Yeah. I mean can you I mean I can like when I did a business years ago we had to buy mapping software to put on individual workstations. I can't imagine like Google Maps is is was the was space age compared to that stuff. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. they, I mean, they do good products too, but you know, just because you make a good mapping software doesn't make, mean you make a good, um, AR headset. What I was kind of alluding to was that, you know, even though it's boring, even though it's, you know, not the flashiest thing that Google really advertises, it's probably one of the most used products that they actually have. And, uh, well, you know, that's what VR needs to be, or AR needs to be. I'll just say this. I was thinking about this the other day when I was, um, I was putting my air conditioner on, I have an app for it. I don't do voice stuff in the house, right? <laughs> like who would have thought that uh, my phone would have been my control for my house, you know, or my yeah. translator. Like you look at this stuff and it has a lot of applications that work. Like you couldn't have had an Uber without a smartphone. You couldn't have had a lot of things without it. You know what I mean? And so it has to be transformational in the way the Gutenberg press was transformational for publishing. It has to be so immediate and so obvious. And like I said, it has to be banal. It has to be so innocuous and so boring that you accept it. It doesn't have to be exciting and cartoonish. It doesn't have to be thrilling. In fact, if it is any of those things, it's going to fail. It needs to be grandpa friendly or grandma friendly. That's what it needs to be. Make it happen. Yep. So there's that. I wanted to do one funny story. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to talk a bit about NASA and and as, as well uh, as well as uh, uh, good day for NASA well. by the way. I mean, not good day, but a lot of NASA news today. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, Na- NASA has been uh, really firing on all cylinders, except for today, where there's a delay. Except but <laughs> I will say that the funny story that we're going to do real quick, Nathan, is this one. Uh, this one I was made aware of, and it was fairly funny. Where I saw that, a, I thought I was going to send that to you. Yeah, yeah, a a uh, a knockoff Chinese company was uh, touting a uh, almost an exact lookalike of the Samsung T5 portable SSD uh, drive, and well, this one which uh, <laughs> I don't think is actually named. Um, let's see. No, no. So, uh, but it was this- sold on AliExpress. Uh, Nathan, it was a thirty. <laughs> it was billed as a thirty terabyte SSD portable drive, selling for just thirty one dollars. TB stands for terrible bargain. No, um, I saw this. I, I didn't want to send it to you because I didn't know if you take it seriously or not. But uh, real quick, just so we're clear, this is not a new scam. This is an old scam. Yes. But it's a f- the audacity of it. <laughs> like, yeah. So, and, oh, oh like, so bad. And, and, and the reason I brought up was, you know, earlier in the show, we were talking about, uh, you know, good microphones, bad microphones and, you know, uh, things like that. And just the need for, you know, we even brought up your Neat Mobile 2 uh, USB microphone review on mm-hmm. your site. The need for reviewers. Uh, because people are going to try to pull this crap where they'll, they'll sell a 31, uh, I'm sorry, a 30 terabyte uh, SSD for 31 bucks and, you know, and sell it on AliExpress. So just real quick for people who don't know, you know, kind of what the scam here is, is that it has, uh, so they have two micro SD cards and while they let you write and write and write files, pictures, movies, you know, whatever documents you want to this drive, it will keep the file extensions. So it looks like everything's good to go. But then when you start butting up against that, uh, but when you start butting up against that, uh, that, you know, whatever the storage rate is, I, let's see, I think the actual storage rate is somewhere far, far below, like you know, just a, a couple of terabytes. Uh, no, will, less than that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Ter- it's terrible. Way, way less than that. It will actually overwrite the files that you already put on there, but it will yeah. keep the file extension. So it looks like, oh, I've written 10,000 documents. I'm good to go. But when you try to access 9,000 of them, well, those are all going to be oh. uh, unaccessible, and the 1,000 has overwritten everything before it. 
it, it's great because it's, again, it, <laughs> the audacity, 30 terabits, uh, USB 2.0, by the way. Can we just be clear? Yes, like, very you, like, like, no offense, if you bought this thing and it was 30 terabits in reality at USB 2, you wouldn't, that wouldn't be a bargain. That would be hell on earth. You'd be, you'd be transferring files for weeks. So, <laughs> but no, it, it basically, it, it has a hackware that tricks your computer into thinking it's actually 30. Ter- in fact, not 29.8, but exactly 30. That's yeah. the red flag. But the fact is, like I said, it's an old scam. It comes back every once in a while. I remember um, there was a lot of spoofing on Amazon about this. In fact, to their credit, Amazon's gotten a little better at taking these scam artists off. But what mm-hmm. will happen is, you know, that you would get the fake SD cards, you get the fake USB sticks. But um, yeah, if you're going to buy it, uh, a Chinese product from a, a deal that looks way too good to be true, um, you know, don't just don't yes. buy it. It doesn't. It's not going to work. It, you're going to be scammed. And shame on Walmart and shame on Alibaba or AliExpress for allowing this. But you know, they get a percentage of the sale. So mm-hmm. in in a way, they're kind of complicit in into allowing this scam to go on. And I guess they're kind of hoping that you know for thirty you know for thirty nine bucks they're hoping that you buy it you use it you don't realize until the thirty day window is you know kind of passed and for mm-hmm. thirty nine dollars they're hoping you don't chase them down to try to get your money back if you even can. Um, I just thought that was a you know such a different kind of scam that you know they they offer it they sell it um, it lo- you know it looks good on the surface and then when you try to access your files everything's overwritten and nothing mm-hmm. works. I thought that was a, yeah. just a very unique kind of scam. There's, um, and I hate to be like, uh, you know, a little xenophobic about this, but Chinese scammers are the best. Like, not like good people, they're terrible people, but they're really good at this because they can, they somehow can make these scams work. Like somebody had to go in there and solder that stuff. Somebody had to go there and open that up. Somebody had to go and put that thing on manually. This is not a production thing. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive in a way. Like in a way they're almost like, adorable in a way if that makes any sense yeah no no it it, it's um you know hey very clearly this is something way too good to be true but it's so egregious you kind of got to look at it and go well they tried (laughs) you know exactly they they had the audacity uh good it's almost like when like a three-year-old uh has the cookie crumbs on their (laughs) mouth and they go did you take the cookie and they're like no it's like you know you tried uh i mean it's not like it's it's not like state secrets or anything i mean it's it's a horrible scam but if you even know a smidge of how computers work you'll this thing is the bad signal right it's still it's still kind of funny Yes, yes. Uh, like I said before, it was a humorous story, so we'll include that in the show link if anyone wants to check that out. But also, don't buy that. Uh, oh, okay, uh, the, so, the, the word I was looking for, by the way, Ben, sorry, was rapscallion. Yes, yes. Those rapscallions and their yes. little scams. The, those those ragamuffins. <laughs> now, with that being said, uh, calling all of Chinese uh, uh, vendors online ragamuffins, let's go ahead and move on over to NASA and the fact that they have delayed, let's see, uh, opens up Friday, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so this didn't get launched, did it? The Artemis 1 moon no, launch. No, um, I heard conflicting reasons. I sent two, two of it. One, I heard engine trouble. And the other heard I had fuel problems. Those are two different things. Um, so I don't exactly know what it is. I'm not going to make a statement here, but apparently there are some fueling issues. Uh, the one story I heard that there were some fueling issues. Uh, let me see real quick. Did you did you did you happen to read uh, about NASA this struggled to fuel the rocket with nearly one million gallons of hydrogen oxygen because of a leak of the highly explosive uh, hydrogen, a problem that also flared up last spring. So it looks like they said they scrubbed it. Just it was a case. known issue. Uh, yeah, uh, th- that happened before. And for those who don't know, like hydrogen, not to get you know very sciencey because I definitely can't. But hydrogen is very very tiny. It's like you know number one on the periodic table of elements. It is the smallest thing. So leaking hydrogen, very very easy to do. Much easier than leaking, let's say, gasoline. Uh, but still, you need that fuel. You know, you, you can't have it leaking out and potentially exploding. So. I feel I feel sorry about this because I know there was a big push. Um, I've seen I've seen a lot of the social media around. There was a big push. Uh, a lot of it was female centric to get be- a lot of um, you know the audiences that don't normally watch this, which is more you know because the idea would be that when we return to the moon, they're going to specifically try to get women and people of color onto the moon. Which again, for the optics of that, would be fantastic. Because there's never been, and we, in fact, there's been no white people on the moon for 40 years either, 50 years. But I, you gotta, you gotta admit, you gotta admit, 
I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I do believe we walked on the moon. But NASA, you don't make it easy. Like NASA is doing everything they can to make people conspiracy theorists. <laughs> like when you look at it, like, first of all, we haven't been to the moon in almost 50 years. The last time we went to the moon, the technology they had could power like a greeting card, right? Your watch has more technology than the moon, the lunar landing. I think a okay, lot well, of that had to do with, it's like we got there and we're like, man, there's nothing here. You know, do you, do you know, yeah. do you know why they said we haven't been back to the moon? They said they, they, lo- they forgot how they lost the paperwork. They lost it. <laughs> they lost the original they lost the original videotapes of the like everything's gone we don't have anything nothing like oh we just have to start from scratch so mm. i'm not a i'm not a conspiracy nut but nasa you make it easy to be an alex jones i'll tell you that <laughs> but um but no it's it's kind of funny that you know we have all this technology and we haven't been back but as someone who's followed rocket launches when i grew up in the east coast i remember I sat there as the challenger as it exploded you know yeah. i um in my home state there was the chris mccullough uh, planetarium that was dedicated to her. Um, 20 years ago, we had the discovery disaster. Like we forget that for some people, space travel was rockets launching. And for a whole generation, space travel has been the space station. Like we've seen space astronauts singing and uh, probes and different things going. Yeah, to exactly. Parts of, yeah. Um, to be honest drones. with you, yeah. it's, it's been so dominated by people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos sending William Shatner or, you know, uh, cars into space singing David Bowie songs like space has sort of been a satellite thing for us like it hasn't been the moon where where it was it was always the moon before like before 2000 it's completely changed now we're going back to the moon I just it's I gotta tell you something if if the United States and Russia and China all just had a nice space race like the old days the world would be so much better the last time we had a proper space race like the world got better. We had G- we got GPS, we got internet, we got Tang, we got space oddity from Bowie. We got ballpoint all kinds pens. of stuff. Yeah, hey, ballpoint pens. We got everything. And yeah. you know what? Nobody. Only a couple people died in a few chimps. But what I'm saying is, let's go How back. Dare by you the way, forget Leica. Leica gave her life. Lifea was a stray. Okay, life is still spinning <laughs> around out somewhere. But I'll say that. By the way, Leica is the dog from Russia. But um, but. I, I would say any, if anybody's even remotely interested in exactly all the work that used to go into rocket fuel, the idea, the audacity that someone could strap a just a rocket that could explode you and incinerate you, go read Tom, uh, Tom Wolf's The Right Stuff. You can watch the movies oh, yeah. too. Apple made a movie, but read the book, The Right Stuff. It's the best document ever written about what, what led up to this. And I got to tell you, I'm all for it. Just go to space, go to the moon, play some golf if you want. But don't do any drilling. Leave the moon alone. I don't want that thing breaking <laughs> up and ruining the oceans. Just don't mind the moon. Nobody owns the moon. Have you Stop seen it. the moon? Ha- have you looked up at space? That place is a dump. It's covered in dust. It's boring. It's drab. It needs some color. You know what? Oh. Mobsters said that mobsters said the same thing about Las Vegas in the fifties, and now look at it. It's a flourishing paradise. It is paradise. boring and drab, and needs some color. Ugh, Vegas. But yeah, no. Um, okay, so there's that. <laughs> so, uh, but but also to uh, kind of throw in one of the other stories as well was the ashes of, of course. Uh, yes. Nichols yeah. will be heading over to uh, will be heading into space on a different flight, not the same one. Uh, different space things going well, on here. Let's hope they get to space because I think the last time they tried to send a Star Trek alumni to space, it didn't work. I think it was uh, mm-hmm. Scotty's uh, M- M- Dugan. What was his name? Uh, Who played Scotty? Doohan, Barrett, Roddenberry, and Roddenberry. Uh, yeah, like like some of their ashes go into space. Some of them don't make it. Um, yeah. Nichelle Nichols, though, to her credit, she actually did some work for NASA back in the seventies. Oh, yeah, she was. Yeah. yeah, she was a recruiter um, for women and women of, and people of color. And to her credit, like I said, she she did a lot of work before Star Trek became massively successful. Like she did it in the interim. So she's been a good science ambassador for this. And I think um, I just hope they make it. Let's just get past the boundary. Just get into right. space. Yeah, so. and, and of course, it seems like a lot of the uh, a lot of the Star Trek, uh, you know, the original cast seem to want the same thing. So this did is you, uh, very did you cool. did you see what this did you see what the rockets called though that kind of center it's the Vulcan um, the Vulcan Centaur. Yes, the Vulcan. Yeah, <laughs> so makes yep makes a lot of sense. So that's you know a great way to honor her, and and like you said, she was a great ambassador and a great advocate for space and, and NASA and everything that they do with their missions. Oh, so I didn't yeah. read this. Um, this is new. I didn't see this part of the story. I'm so sorry. I just learned something. Mm-hmm. Um, her her ashes are not going to be alone. 
No, 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 no. Uh, 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 Doohan, uh, let's see, so James Doohan, uh, and, who played Scotty, like you and said. And Gene Roddenberry. No, I mean, in the same rocket, there's yeah. going to be some ashes from Gene Roddenberry and Majel Barrett. Now, Majel Barrett's also Star Trek royalty. For those who don't know, she played the voice of every computer on every Star Trek show up until, like, Enterprise. She was always the same voice, and she was on the show, too, as uh, Deanna Troy's annoying mother. Yeah. But, um yeah, but no, that's that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yep. So yeah, it's uh, uh, definitely a very cool thing, and I don't know when that rocket is supposed to be going. Uh, but we'll eventually let's see, running the Enterprise flight mission. So so yeah, there we go. But uh, so let's hope that goes off with that hitch. And back to our other story about uh, the Artemis One rocket mm-hmm. that has been delayed until Friday. If anyone is keeping track of that, so it was supposed to happen last Friday. They're now going to do it on September second. So okay. mark your calendar. Just keep at it. Don't quit. Just keep doing it. Keep going. That rocket, by do- the way, is absolutely massive. It is like the biggest rocket that they've launched uh, since. It's the also Saturn colorful. It, it's orange, isn't it? It's not the normal yeah. like white drab. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's a gorgeous, huge rocket. So looking forward to that. Okay, now uh, we're going to wrap up our stories here, looking at some other things. Super Mario Kart turns 30. Uh, just a shout out. We're not really going to talk about that. I think ooh. we all have our good memories of, of Mario Kart in, you know, Rainbow Road and that kind of thing. You, but, you yeah. know, a uh, cra- crazy thing. Uh, the best selling game console in the world is the Switch by far, not even close. So like 115 million units. Best selling game on the Switch, Mario Kart. Mario Kart I have seen Deluxe. the new Mario Kart, and it's a lot of fun. I, it's, I've, yeah, it's funny that Nintendo advertised that game as multiplayer in bars. Like, go to a bar, put your expensive Switch on the bar with drunk people, <laughs> and play multiplayer on a little screen. Yeah, that's that's safe. You want to do that? You're not going to get robbed. Yeah. So. So there's yeah. that, uh, and also there's an AMD unveil event happening later on today. Mm-hmm. So maybe soon we'll, we'll be able to talk about that on the show, but uh, rumors abound and Hey, I'm looking forward to the next generation, either NVIDIA, AMD or Intel it's all time. coming out with their new hardware. Yeah, it's time. It's, it's time. Um, I was at micro center this week and uh, my, our good friend, Corey uh, just went on a spending spree too, because th- it's back. Like the supply chain is getting better. The GPUs are out, the motherboards are out. So, but a lot of it's sort of last year stuff. Yeah. So, but the new stuff is coming, so it's going to be a nice little little bounce. I, I know that if, if my PC can, you know, kind of hold on, fingers crossed, this is the year that I upgrade as well. It's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's time. I'm looking forward to it. And, hey, we'll talk more about that when hard numbers come out. We're going to wrap up the show here, Nathan, though, with a talk about Pop Zara podcast. And sure. how's that going? Uh, the latest episode oh. was about gaming, movies, and K-dramas. I, I will say that, but I want to say one of my semi-predictions came true, not true. Um, I predicted we talked about the PlayStation Five getting a price increase, and I said I didn't. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. It happened, and it didn't happen. It it happened <laughs> in, in markets, the rest of the world, yes. but it didn't happen here. So that's something I want you to watch for because that's the only other company that I've seen do that recently has been Meta or Facebook mm-hmm. with their their stuff. So just watch that very carefully. That could pretend a lot of the future of home consoles what they're right. doing right now. Um, now back to Pop Zara, you know, that little website, that little scraggly thing. Uh, we got a bunch of podcasts coming this week. We got a bunch in the bag. Uh, they're being edited right now. I'll say this. We uh, had our normal state of gaming, which was a lot of fun. Uh, Corey and I talked a lot about what's going on, about the best sellers, about the non best sellers, about things going on. If you listen to it before, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, gotcha. The What other one did I tell you about? We also have, uh, we have new movie time podcast coming out with myself and my uh, co-host, Ethan Brem. We're going to be talking about movies you've never seen. You've never seen The Stupids, have you? You ever heard of The Stupids? The Stupids starring Tom Arnold. No, I've only been called The Stupids. I've never seen The (laughs) Stupids. What is that? One of of his favorite movies. It was a movie that came out by John Landis, the the director of uh, Coming to America, made a movie called The Stupids about a family called the stupids that go on a mad dash effort to uncover a conspiracy theory theory from the postal service. Hmm. It's not good, but he loves it. <laughs> uh, and we're also going to be talking about another film called under the silver lake, which is a very interesting movie. I don't know if you've heard of it um, much better than the stupids, but very divisive, very divisive. Uh, that should be out either today or tomorrow. And finally we have a, uh, one of our own editor at large's uh, 
Ev Wong. She's going to be talking about K dramas with a Hollywood person. That mm-hmm. should be out this week as well. It's interesting. A lot of cool stuff. Definitely. Um, Nathan, look at you. I leave you alone for a couple weeks and you <laughs> do a bunch of stuff. How could you? I, I'm a rap scallion, just like those yes, Chinese bootleggers. Yes, you are. So, with that being said, everyone, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the program. We're going to kind of broadcast. Uh, not that one. Ha! Huh. Nah. This one. There we go. Uh, we're going to wrap that one up there. So, uh, if you want to find out more, computeramerica.com. We'll have in the show notes everything that we talked about, including links to Pop Czar, the podcast, all that kind of thing. But uh, in the meantime, Nathan, thank you so much for time shifting. That has been very helpful to me. Uh, we're back uh, after a week long vacation. Everyone, we hope that you are well. And hey, you're ready for more Computer America coming up. So, until next time, everyone, have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Nathan. Bye, mm-hmm. everyone. Bye-bye.